And joining me now with reaction is Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Sir, welcome to the program. Glad to be with you, Sean. All right, what's your reaction? Because the Fox News numbers that came out last week, very, very similar. Honesty, trustworthy, seems like it's a well, free fall. Well, I think the president leads in two fashions. He has the legal authority by being elected, but you also need moral authority. And I think this constellation of scandals, really he's losing his moral authority to lead the nation. The other thing I think people don't like is hypocrisy. He said he was going to protect our privacy. He said he would protect the Fourth Amendment. He appeared to care, and he still sounds like he does, but then he does the complete opposite. And then you have his director of intelligence who looks straight at a senator and says, we're not collecting any data on Americans, when in fact the truth is they're collecting a billion phone calls every day. Yeah, you know, I once asked you, how do you describe yourself politically? And, you know, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, and you, your answer was interesting to me. You said constitutional conservative. How you does know, this... Go ahead. Oh. I would say I'm an originalist. You know, I, I like Scalia. I like Thomas on the court. They're my two favorites. And I think we look back at the real meaning of what the Constitution was, and it did mean you, you had a certain degree of privacy that the Fourth Amendment granted. And we've been going in the wrong direction for a long time. So this is a very healthy debate if the country will have it. But the debate's not about the person or the leaker. It's also not about the national intelligence director lying. It's really about whether or not your private records when someone else holds them, when a bank holds them, or the visa company holds them, whether you still should have privacy. How do you think these scandals collectively impact, you know, constitutional issues of our time? You know, they add, they add to each other, and I think the IRS scandal is uh, very damaging to the president's credibility because it appears as if he's targeting political opponents. And now it turns out that the woman who took the Fifth Amendment used to be in the FEC, and she was threatening Republican candidates as much as 10 or 15 years ago. I wonder if this goes deeper into the culture of a government union that runs the IRS and whether or not there is an animus towards any of us who want to lower taxation and have limited government. I think I think really there has to be a top to bottom reviewing of the IRS at large because is there a systemic problem over there? All right, let me ask you um, about the immigration bill which now is making its way through the Senate. Lindsey Graham said this weekend that Hispanics cost Romney the election and if we don't pass immigration reform, if we don't get it off the, the table, uh, we're in a demo, uh, demographic death spiral. Do you think he's right on that? I absolutely believe that we need to be more inclusive and that we need to go out and talk to Hispanics and Latinos and tell them why the Republican Party is a good fit for them. I don't agree that that means we choke on and vote on anything, even a bad bill. Recently, the proponents, the Gang of Eight, are saying that legalization happens before we get to border security. That's the opposite of what conservatives want. I have an amendment, trust but verify, but it guarantees that the legalization is dependent upon border border security, and only if the border gets more secure does legalization happen. That's the only thing the House would accept, and so they're going down a path saying they're going to legalize people no matter whether we get border security. That won't fly in the House. Do you think they want this to fail, meaning the Democrats, because they can use it as a wedge issue? Some do. Some are, are not are disingenuous about this and could care less. Some honestly want it to pass. I am actually a Republican who honestly wants to fix the system because we got 10 to 11 million people here illegally because the legal immigration system is broken. So I do want to fix that, but I can't just vote for any bill if it's not going to secure the border first. Let me go to a couple of quotes going back to this issue of Snowden and him revealing these, these secrets. And let me put up a couple of things that he said. One, he said, all I can uh, say right now is the U.S. government's not going to be able to cover this up by jailing or murdering me. Truth is coming and it cannot be stopped. And then he said, no, I've had no contact with the Chinese government, just like The Guardian and The Washington Post. I only work with journalists. There's been a lot of discussion in the country about whether he's a, a hero or a traitor. I'm glad this information came out because I think the American people have a right to know. I'm also concerned, though, about revealing secrets. What's your take on it? You know, I think if he had revealed a computer program that showed how we 
eavesdropped on people who are enemies, that I think would be uh, a, a very serious crime. But he revealed something that the media complained, oh, everybody already knew about it anyway. So we did. It had been revealed. The New York Times had revealed it. We passed special legislation. I voted against all of this, but they did pass special legislation authorizing it. But he still feels like it goes against the Fourth Amendment and what the Constitution and the Bill of Rights stands for. I tend to agree with his position. You're on deciding when you decide to become a civil disobedient. You know, that we've had famous ones in our career, but some of them only had to serve, like Thoreau served one day in jail. Martin Luther King served 30 days in jail. He may be looking at life in prison, so there is a question. People are saying, oh, we ought to just come home. But I don't know if that's a good or a bad idea if he's facing life in prison. Yeah. Let me ask you about this, this trip. Uh, the president's in Dublin for, the, I guess, the G8 summit, and uh, the first lady has an entourage of 30, um, a $3,300 a night, beautiful suite, pretty good life if you can have it. There's an upcoming trip to Africa later this month that's expected to cost 60 to $100 million for the taxpayers. Uh, but the president couldn't keep the White House open. You see a correlation there? Well, you know, we also don't have the Capitol Police guarding all the entrances to the Senate buildings anymore because of the sequester, but we have enough for travel. We also had 225 IRS travel trips last year to the tune of $4 million they spent. I think it was over a two-year period. So really, uh, you know, it's, it's crazy what's going on with government travel, government expense. Overall, federal employees spend $9 billion on travel. And when this all came up about the sequester, I proposed that we cut it by 25 percent, don't let it affect the military, but just cut everybody else by 25 percent and it'd save over two billion dollars. So yeah, I think there's room for cutting and they ought to look in the mirror maybe. All right, you've, you've had a lot of trips uh, recently. Let me see, you've been in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, the very interesting states that you've been traveling to, Senator. Uh, how, how is one to interpret your travel schedule? Well, you know, when you go to the early primary states, people do pay attention, and right now I want them to pay attention to the fact that I want a bigger Republican Party that competes in all 50 states. I want to go from 5% of the African American vote to at least 20, 25% of the African American vote in one election. If we do that, all the states where we're not competitive, all of a sudden they become competitive again. And that means uh, you're really seriously thinking about it. We're thinking about growing the party. What, what comes after that, we'll see. <laughs> you know, you're not giving me any information here. You're, you're making it hard. I'm pulling. I'm trying hard here, Senator. Uh, you're not breaking I'm, news tonight. I got it. I'm trying to give you a scoop. The best I got. All right. Good to see you, Senator Rand Paul. Thanks for being with us. Uh